So here you're at the Boeing booth at the National Space Symposium. Uh, what we're looking at right here is our space launch system uh, that Boeing's working on for NASA. That's NASA's future rocket that's going to carry their astronauts and other payloads into deep space. So that's the rocket that's going to take humans to Mars someday. Uh, it's the biggest rocket ever built. It will be the most powerful rocket ever built. And it will go farther into space than we've ever gone before. Like I said, it will take humans to Mars. Um, it's going to launch in 2018 for the first time. And then um, with NASA's plan, it should take humans to Mars sometime in the 2030s. So it's pretty exciting to be a part of that program. So with the SLS, I mentioned it's one of the biggest rockets, or it will be the biggest rocket that NASA's ever built. The, it'll have a between a 5 to 10 meter fairing that can accommodate payloads in size. So what you're looking at here is Boeing CST-100. So this will bring the capability to launch astronauts from U.S. soil uh, back up to the International Space Station, which is a low Earth orbit. That's what it's designed to do. It's capable of carrying up to seven astronauts or a mix of astro astronauts and cargo. Um, we're designing it with, for NASA right now, optimizing it for four astronauts, but we're actually building it to accommodate a fifth astronaut because um, we hope to use that for space tours someday as well. So on the outside it looks kind of like the old Apollo capsule era, but on the inside it's filled with lots of new technology. Uh, one of the benefits of, of working at the Boeing company is we, we're a large company with a commercial and a defense and a space side. So inside this capsule we worked with our commercial airplanes division to put some new, um, we'll call it the Boeing uh, sky interior lighting inside of it. So it's kind of a LED lighting. Uh, with some blue hues and what that does is it helps make the interior of the cabin feel a lot more spacious. Um, so a lot of really neat things going on inside the capsule. That it's a, it is a new modern everyday capsule. It's the only capsule being developed right now that's getting certified to land on land. Um, the other ones are out there, they land in the water or they, aren't re or they don't um, have a return capability. This one obviously will, our, our crew and cargo ca capsule will land on land. So benefits of that are the reusability, like I mentioned, also easier and faster access to all of the science and astronauts that we bring back from the International Space Station, which is very important. A lot of the science payloads are very critical. They have, you know, you need to get to them within a matter of hours because they have to go from, you know, from one cold space to another cold space, or they have a certain temperature that they have to maintain. Um, so getting to that science payload quickly is very important. So this is the space launch system. And so Boeing is building the core stages of SLS, Space Launch System. So behind this are two tanks, a liquid oxygen tank and a liquid hydrogen tank. And between those tanks is an instrumentation unit. And that instrumentation unit has all the data that the vehicle will be able to take on and be able to distribute back to mission control and be able to store within the vehicle to be able to analyze post-flight. Why? Because when we launched this the first time, we continued to learn. We use analysis via wind tunnel testing and a lot of different arenas to be able to get ready for first flight. But when we fly the first time, right here in the middle is the instrumentation unit. And in there are all the avionics boxes, all the data and telemetry that come from sensors in each tank. So sensors that come from the boosters, sensors that come from the tanks, sensors that come from the oxygen tank, and all of that information is compressed together to be able to provide engineers on the ground lessons learned. What is happening in the vehicle compared to how you analyze that? And if you do that over and over again with each successive flight, you get a more efficient vehicle, you get a better vehicle, you get a vehicle that meets its target 100% every time. So when we think about the journey to space, deep space exploration is where we're headed. But we also have to take care of the largest satellite humans have ever built, the International Space Station. And today NASA is asking Boeing, to develop the CST-100, and that's a low Earth orbit vehicle that will be launching in 2017, launching on an Atlas V rocket and taking humans to the International Space Station and back and creating the science necessary to go further into deep space. Well, from an engineer's perspective, data is king. Data defines everything in how you design, how you analyze, and how you create a human space vehicle. So when we think about CST-100, there's sensors at the top of the vehicle for our docking system to be able to identify the front door of the International Space Station and be able to dock to the International Space Station for your mission. Inside the vehicle, there are many sensors from temperature at the cabin, as something as simple as the dial, like for example in your car, to something more complex as humidity control, 
uh, carbon control, carbon dioxide control in the vehicle, scrubbing mechanisms within it. So data is king, from pressure and fluid lines for thermal uh, e equilibrium in the vehicle to pressurization and ensuring that the pressure inside the cabin is very similar to the pressure you experience here on Earth. That way our astronauts experience human spaceflight in the most comfortable way possible. Because the end user is a human, it's an astronaut. And so when we go to space, we want to make sure the human is most comfortable and safe for their mission.